<laughs> so, it's kind of late at night, so excuse anything, any mistakes I might make. But, um, my crash while I was doing something for my, my, uh, my personal game project. And I decided, well, I can, it gives me an opportunity to share what I'm doing with you. So, what I've been working on, I'm speaking a little quiet because it is 12.42 in the morning, and I have a sweet mate and someone in the other room, but I'm the RA, so... <sighs> Anyways, what I'm going to be showing you is a quick tutorial on using... Fields... Sorry, it's, it is... <laughs> that is what time it is. Um, using fields and end cloth to create a ripple effect. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to make a new scene. New scene. You can see here's the one that crashed on me. Um, I think I screwed up that file. Other, either way, I want to show you from the start. Um, I'm going to save an empty scene because I like doing that. And I'm going to go ahead in my last tutorial, I was looking for the, um, the setting for the frames. I was doing uh, the wrong section. So I feel stupid for that, but nonetheless, here it is. Um, so I've got the set, and I want to use centimeter because that's what um, my likes, and I'd rather scale later. And see, now it's at 1.25, and this is what I want to set to 1. I'm going to make sure that play every frame is checked. This is um, saved from last time, but make sure you check play every frame every time. Any time you're using um, dynamics, otherwise you're not going to get a uh, a real preview of what's going to actually end up happening. Oh, my voice is all scratchy because it's 12:45 a.m. <laughs> um, so I'm going to go ahead and go over to one here, and I'm going to create a polyplane. And this is going to be my base surface um, because our object is going to have gravity on it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do 25 by 25. That's going to make it larger than the grid. Um, I'm going to hold X to snap it. Um, the default grid is uh, like 24.5. I don't know why it's like that. You can change that in your grid settings, but uh, somewhere up there late at night, I'm not even going to try and find something. And now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make another plane, and this plane is going to be our um, our hero plane. It's going to be our, our end cloth. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to snap that to the center here, and I'm going to lift it just above the ground. Um, now what I'm going to go ahead, I did this after I created the end cloth last time, and I believe that's what crashed. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do this before I turn this into an end cloth. I'm going to take these four corners and I'm going to snap them down to the ground. And you're going to see why I'm doing that later. Um, I'm going to save. Now I'm not going to be deleting my history so much because I want uh, some of these things to remain dynamic with their inputs. Um, so that's what we got. I want to go ahead and turn this on so I can see what I'm doing. And now I'm going to I'm going to proceed. All right, so I'm going to take this. I'm going to go into our end cloth settings, and I'm going to turn this into an end cloth. And there we go. And end cloths already automatically have gravity on them. Um, you can change how it's affected by changing the point mass. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to play it. And it falls through the ground. That's fine. We're going to turn this into a, a uh, collider. So now that's a collider. It'll collide with the end cloth. There we go. And that's fine. That's something I didn't encounter last time because I did it backwards. So we've got that working. Very nice. Um, now I'm going to go ahead, and this is what crashed me last time, and uh, why I got to make this wonderful tutorial. But I'm going to go in here, I'm going to, the reason I'm using, um, 
the distance tool to create those locators is just because if you do create locator, it'll build a locator and it'll put it in the direct center of the, the map. And then I'd have to go into the outliner to select it. And um, because there's just so much stuff automatically in the middle of the map, you can see it puts um, the, the end rigid and the end cloth or the end rigid node, which is what uh, determines a lot of properties of the uh, cloth. It puts it in the center, so it's it's easier for me to just put one, two, three, four, and then drag those into delete the uh, the uh, measurements, and then just drag them into position. So now what I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do is I'm going to select those objects. Do, 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 do. And then I'm going to go in here and I'm going to select these vertices. Now you notice that I can select um, parts on two different objects by just selecting these and then just mouse clicking over and going into to vertex mode. Let's right click. Um, and it'll it'll keep the, uh, the selected objects um, just in case anyone's kind of lost by, by how I did that. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go into end cloth and I'm going to make these point constraints. So that those those will now stick to where they are, and so hopefully, there we go. It's not quite what I was looking for, but it'll probably be fine. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna create a uh, a polysphere, and I'm going to snap it using X again, W X to uh, the center of the grid. I'm gonna pull it down. There we go. I'm going to expand this, give myself, let's say, 90 frames, I think, worked last time. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to save, because I don't like it when my crashes, and after a crash, I'm a little concerned about it crashing again. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, I'm going to set a keyframe. And you'll notice that I did set, I know on my last video, where I did the, uh, the perpetual motion uh, object, I said that you can just key... Um, one or two things and that'll be more effective. It'll be more effective for your file size, so yes, it could be important to do that, but um, but really when we're baking on the animation, it's it's going to bake all the positions for all the vertices every time um, when we're exporting to Unity. So, I mean, it'll reduce the size of the file in Maya, but it's going to be faster if it's just hit the S key. Um, and now, since we are closer to the bottom, I'm not really concerned about uh, any of that. So I'm going to go ahead and on 4, I'm going to move this up in here. I'm going to hit S. And then the frame afterwards, or a couple frames afterwards. I'm not going to want to leave it in there too quickly, or too much, but I don't want to freak it out by doing something that's drastically impossible. Um, I'm going to pull it out like that. So the cube, the sphere is just gonna pop in, pop out. Um, I'm gonna go ahead. I believe I made this a collider. There we go. Now it's a, a collider with the uh, the keyframes. So let's see if this evaluates right. There we go. That's exactly what we're looking for. So we've got a push and up like that. Um, I think I want it to be a little more. Drastic, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move it up further. I'm going to hit play. There we go. That's looking pretty good. It looks like the constraints are are being too powerful at this point. You can see it's kind of um, outlined, overlaying into a, a square at the edges there. And this is because we don't have a circular cloth. And um, we could go ahead and average vertices a bunch of times, um, or smooth it even. But I want to leave it at the resolution that it is right now, since it is being used for a game. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to bring this back down to a point where it's not going to do that too boldly. Yeah, there we go. That's about what I'm looking for. And what I'm going to do later is, since this is going to um, the game, you're probably confused about why I'm doing this for my game, but that's because I haven't announced my game yet, and I haven't announced the premise or anything. Um, but this is going to be an effect for when an object hits the water, um, it's going to go ahead and it's going to create this ripple. So I'm going to texture this in a way that... Uh, 
Oh, is it going in like a, an oval? Let's go ahead and let's set this to about, let's say, 30. Looks like it's going in an oval for whatever reason. Or my eyes are playing tricks on me. Either way, I don't know. I think my fans are starting to kick in on my computer because that's kind of intensive. You can see it's using a lot of my processor. 180%. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stop that before my fans start freaking out because I am using the built-in mic on uh, on my computer so that's probably really loud right now because the fans are right next to the mic. Don't ask me why Apple did that. The, the whole don't even get me in, involved in the heat dispersion techniques used by this computer. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to play it once through just so I can see about where it ends. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to step through this frame by frame to uh, to see when exactly this ends so that I can export it. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So that's where I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to export to frame 20, or I'm going to bake animation from frame 3 or 4 to frame 20, and then that's going to be the effect that I get in the, in the game engine. But that's that's pretty much all I wanted to uh, to really show. So I create a really simple ripple effect um, using end cloths and, uh, and that gravity field. Actually, I don't think we even used the gravity field in this instance, did we? No, we didn't even use the gravity field. Um, and that's because I, I stayed in, uh, in centimeters, because if you expand this into meters, most of the calculations done in Maya, now I don't know if this has changed in the new version, but even if you switch to another measurement or another unit, it will still run all the calculations in centimeters. So um, the, the gravity field would be not powerful enough if this was in meters. Um, but yeah, that's all I was gonna gonna show, and uh, I'll see you guys next time.